If the government implemented a housing policy that actually pushed house prices down, I guarantee one thing would happen. That policy would be changed overnight. Because the two thirds of Australians who already own a house don't want to see house prices fall. So unfortunately for the one third of people who'd like to buy their first home, the politics are that the majority of people are literally invested in the current house price. And in turn, governments don't really want to come out and say, here's a policy that will significantly lower the price of housing. So instead of admitting that, what they keep doing is announcing what we call demand side policies. So we've had first homeowner grants, we've had uh, all sorts of attempts to make it easier for people to save up a deposit, including now the ability to withdraw some money from your super. So we keep propping up the ability of people to go to an auction and bid a higher price. But of course, all that does is push house prices further up. So let me give you a weird example. Think about what happens to the price of prawns at Christmas time. For whatever reason in Australia, people love to eat prawns at Christmas. But the prawns aren't really in on this and the supply of prawns doesn't really change in December. So when the demand increases, the price goes up. Now imagine we were worried about prawn affordability. So we gave first prawn buyers 10 bucks or we gave away vouchers to help people buy their first kilo of prawns. What would that do to the price of prawns? It'd just push it up even higher. So unfortunately, unless we're willing to admit that so many of the government policies that we have on the tax side and on the subsidy side all just keep pushing up the demand for housing until we admit that and until we just start to see the government directly building lots of housing. Once upon a time we did it, but we've stigmatized the idea of public housing, other countries still do it, until we stop pumping up the demand and actually start building a lot of the houses we need and renting or selling them to people we wanna rent or sell them to, the price of houses is just gonna keep going up and up and up. And the simple fact is, the people who already own a home benefit from that and the government would be terrified of telling homeowners that they're about to implement a policy that will push house prices down. The reality is housing plays different roles in our economy for different people. For some people, housing is just a house. For some people, it's an investment. And for some people, they have lots of investments in lots of investment housing. And what those people want and need out of the housing market are entirely different. So if you're living in a house and the price of the house doubles, how does that affect your life? Probably doesn't at all. If you, if you want to keep living where you're living, then you can't really turn that increase in the value of your house into cash unless you either want to sell your house, but if you, if, if you need to buy a new one, you're going to have to pay a lot for that too, or you could borrow against it, but how are you going to service that debt? And what happens if one day house prices did fall? So for people who live in houses, house prices are kind of a bit artificial. For people that are trying to buy their first house, well, that's quite a different kettle of fish. But for people who own one or more investment properties, you bet they want to see house prices go up. And of course, they want to see rents go up as well. So unfortunately, when we talk about housing in Australia, we don't talk about how what one group, like first home buyers need, is quite different from what people who just own one house and want to live in it need, which in turn is quite different from what people who invest in housing need. Now, the maths of this is quite simple. You often hear governments encouraging people to buy investment properties, because imagine if we all owned an investment property, we'd all be rich when we retired. But if we all owned a house and an investment property, who would rent our investment property? Every time we encourage someone to build a new house for rent, then we're saying someone else is gonna to have to be a tenant, not live in their own house, or not themselves be a landlord. So unfortunately, we just aren't looking at the different categories uh, of what people want out of housing. And as a result, 
this P and thimble trick keeps getting played. So capital gains tax concessions, negative gearing, all sorts of tax breaks apply to help people buy investment properties. And when they show up at an auction and they're bidding against a first home buyer, those tax breaks make it easier and more likely that the investor is going to win at the auction. They're wi literally willing to bid a higher price because of the combination of capital gains tax concessions and negative gearing. And as long as that's in place, if all we do is hand out some cash to the first home buyers, we're just selling weapons to both sides in a war. The inevitable result of tax breaks for investors and cash subsidies for first home buyers is to bid up the housing price. And again, who wins from that? People who already own a house, or better still, people who already own multiple houses. So we need to take seriously the fact that we've created a tax system that advantages some people in the market. We're spending a lot of money on different subsidies to help other people into the market. But because the government is not building housing like it used to, like it does in most countries, because that's not taking place, the simple reality is Australia now has some of the most expensive housing in the world. <music>